gospel of the kingdom shall be preached mm -hmm. to all the world, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, but, but you know, the, that verse about the, the end will come, right? When, mm -hmm. when the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. But right before that is what you quoted, right? The love of many shall grow cold. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that if you consider the love of many will grow cold there, it's not just talking about the secular world, mm -hmm. talking about God's people, That's right. right? We're talking about God's people. Mm -hmm. And so the gospel of the kingdom is really preached to God's people. Mm -hmm. It's not preached to, right, the secular people, right, the, uh, but unbelievers. But so it's really the gospel of the kingdom, which is the oneness of the body of Christ, the building up of the ecclesia, that would reverse that process, right? Reverse that process because in our own silo, in our own silo of churches and ministries, we, uh, our love for the others, many, right? It's not just our group, our church, but the love of many is grown, has grown cold, has grown cold, right? We only care for our own things, our own, our own group. The gospel of the kingdom is to exactly to reverse that, That's right. right? So, you know, um, I was going to bring up is that, uh, of course, the famous verse is, I will build my ecclesia, right? I think we talked about that church is actually a conspiracy, right? It was a purposeful mm -hmm. mistranslation right. to, instead of the Lord Jesus having his democratic assembly, mm -hmm. Believers are now caught up in a dictatorship under various churches, okay? So whereas the Lord is building his democratic assembly where no one is in charge other than him, right? I mean, he's, we're all joined to him. We're all connected to him. There is no intermediary, right, connection between us and God and the head. So the Lord says, okay, I'm going to build my, you guys have yours and yours is a mess. The, the, the secular democracy today is a mess, right? As witnessed by the leader of democracy, the United States of America. I mean, just the, just the, just the, uh, the, 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 the hatred, the division, the manipulation, the corruption that is going on. Uh, and it's reflected also in the Nigerian democracy, supposedly. There's a democracy, but you have all these things going on. So the Lord comes... And says, okay, you, you guys invented democracy. You guys, the Greeks, you guys been practicing democracy until now, 2000, and, right, uh, uh, 21. You're still practicing the democracy. But now I'm going to build mine. I'm going to build mine. And mine's going to be even more diverse than yours. You think the U.S. is a melting pot, right? Or the Greeks' democracy was a you know, needing representation from every segment of society. But the Lord says, well, I'm going to build mine, and mine's going to include females. Okay, now the Greek, even back to the Romans Empire time, the ecclesia did not include females, right? It's only the male, and did not include slaves, okay? Only the citizens, okay? <laughs> but the Lord says, I'm going to build my ecclesia, and you know what? It's going to be more diverse. It's going to be people from every tribe, tongue, nations, and people, right? And, uh, and it's going to include masters and slaves. It's going to include male and female, include the most divided and hostile, hostile people, the Jews and the Gentiles. And I'm going to bring them together, and they're going to still be who they are. See, we're, there's no conformity. You know, it's not, I'm not going to become a female, <laughs> you know, the female is not going to become a male. We're going to be distinct, but yet we're going to love one another, right? The Jews and the Gentiles still distinct, but now there's love and there's oneness. So what a contrast, what a contrast between the democracy, the ecclesia of the world and the Lord's ecclesia. So no wonder the Lord prayed. He says, when you are one, the world believes. Because they're going to look at, we've been trying to do, we try, we've been trying to get this thing together. And there's, instead of coming together, the more we talk about, you know, multiculturalism and, you know, 
uh, you know, love, no, no racism, and there's even more, right? I mean, more, more division, more racism, right? You can't, you can't legislate the heart. You can't legislate love. You know, you can try to punish people, but the thing is, love is 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 of the heart, right? Love is internal, and racism is of the heart. You can't erase racism without something in the heart being being touched, right? Being changed, and so so they they gonna say we've been trying to get together like this, but now we see the ecclesia, the God's people. They're all diverse, right? There's blacks and whites and rich and poor, male, female, you know, in employers and employees and right and they're all they're they still keeping their distinctions right but yet they love one another so what a testimony so no wonder the world would say wow you know jesus is for real and so you're talking about the the you know the the signs of the times and of course you you have the wars and rumors of wars and and all these things, you know, Christ is here, Christ is there, you know, the false Christ and so forth. But really, to me, I, I, I believe that the end will not come, right, until there's a testimony of the oneness of God's people, right? So the Lord prayed, in fact, he prayed, he says, I'm not praying that they'll be taken out of the world, that but they'll be kept in the world. They're, they stay in the world. So here we are as Christians. We're waiting to go to heaven, right? Heaven will fix it all, right? I mean, I can't stand you, Francis. You know, I can't fellowship with you. But when I get to heaven, we're good. But, I mean, wouldn't that make us all robots then? Right? I mean, how could, how come we, we can't fellowship and love one another now and all of a sudden in heaven, then everything is erased? What, we got rebooted? We, you know, we got... Reboot, okay, so Francis is no more Francis, Henry's no more Henry, and now we're all angels. I mean, then what's the point of going to heaven if we all become like, a, you know, some sort of robot? No, but, but that we are who we are, and God is working in our lives today, right, to transform us, to change us, so that we can, we can love one another today in the midst of, of this darkened world in the midst of confusion, of hatred, and yet we are a lampstand, right? We're a light sat on a hill. Not just because of our holiness. Now, a lot of believers, they focus themselves on holiness, right? Personal holiness, personal holiness. I need to be holy. Uh, but interesting thing is that both in the Lord's Prayer that I give you the word, which is the truth, and the truth sanctifies, right, made holy. But the outcome of that being made holy is that they may be one, right? That they may be one. So the outcome of holiness is actually oneness. Same as Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5 talking about we're being sanctified by the washing of the water in the word, that we may become a glorious, that the ecclesia, the ecclesia may become glorious, right? That's the bride. So here you have two clear, you know, instances of the Bible where it talks about that holiness, sanctification, should bring people believers, and then bring, bring believers together. Then you have to look at Jesus. Jesus, I think we would all agree, is the holy one. Right? I mean, he is the Holy One. He is the definition of holiness and sanctification. But yet, how free was he in mingling with all kinds of people, right? I mean, he was able to eat and drink with the, the tax collectors and the, and the sinners. And I mean, he even washed Judas's feet. I mean, he was, I mean, he was able to be around all kinds of different people that are unholy. You know, they're unholy, but he's the holy one. Because holiness is within, is circumcision is not of the flesh, right? Circumcision is not outward, but it's of the heart. So he could be in the midst of the world, 
but yet he's kept from the evil one, right? Because he's in, he has holiness in the heart, okay? So now what happened is among Christians, we talk about holiness, well, praise God, we pray for holiness. The problem is that when we talk about our version of holiness, mostly we don't want to, like, I can't be with this person, or I can't be with that person. I got to keep myself separate from this kind of people. I got to keep myself separate from this kind of uh, atmosphere, this kind of a music, this kind of a movie, this kind of a, you know, uh, you know, anybody who's got beer, you know, drinking beer, I can't be with there because, you know, so this whole thing has become the focus on holiness has actually divided believers I don't know whether you can identify with that, Francis, right? Right? I mean, that, 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 that emphasis on holiness has divided. So eventually, the ch churches and ministries have used holiness to keep their saints from mingling with other believers, right? I mean, we're the holy people, right? I mean, you know, we're into the deeper life. We're into holiness. We're into separation. And so... Uh, so you need to, you know, uh, stay away from those that are not holy. <laughs> okay, I mean, and you can go across the board. I mean, even those, you know, I, I know that those that are raised, uh, let's say, once saved, always saved. I mean, even though that's not focused on holiness, but if you're raised once saved, always saved, if that's your doctrinal understanding, you don't want to be in fellowship with those that says you can lose your salvation, right? And, and vice versa. So all this kind of thing has really, um, uh, uh, the enemy has used this to separate God's people when God's purpose is to bring his distinctly different people into oneness, right? And that is the heart of the Trinity. In fact, that is the image, you know, earlier, Francis, we talked about the, you know, in Genesis where he says, um, I will, you know, uh, let us, right? Let us, when it came to man, before man, it was, you know, and God said, right? Let God said, and God said, let there be light. God said, let there be the fowls of the air, right? Let's, and God's, so, but when it came to man, it's very interesting. He says, let us, right? In our image, okay? Us, our. Well, because the Trinity, the Trinity, the three, right, the Father, Son, and Spirit, was involved in that decision-making. Let us make man. But the interesting thing, I don't know if you thought about this, is that he made man, okay, singular, male and female. He created them. Okay, so man, he created man, but this man is not just Adam. This man is male and female. And this man, in fact, out of Adam and Eve, this man increased into multitudes of men. And that these, this man is really the multiplication of man, a corporate man, that would then show forth the image and dominion right, that God needs on the earth. So now what is this? Why, so that now you have to be, it's interesting now to go, okay, God is three, one. He's distinctly three from eternity to eternity, right? Distinctly, Father, Son, Spirit. But yet these three are one, absolutely one. In fact, every time that God appeared, he appeared as one, okay? There's no time that God appeared in three, okay? Even though he is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So the Godhead, the fullness of the Godhead dwells in him bodily. There's only one body that contains the three, okay? And so now you have uh, God saying, we will make man singular, right? God said he will make man. So man is made in the image of God 
in the sense that God is three one and man is now multiple one. Specifically starting with male and female, but out of male and female, now there are, you know, billion, billions, right? So it was that, so the image and the dominion has everything to do with God's image, which is three one, and that man is multiple one. I don't know if you thought of that connection. Okay, so now follow me here. Satan came in. Satan came in. And what was the first sin, act of sin, when Satan came in was Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel, I mean, that's the ultimate division is one killing your brother, right? So the first act of sin was division to the uttermost. So the image, that means God's image was shattered it's because God's image needs multiple one or two one or three one, right? And yet God, Satan came in to shatter that image by dividing what God created. Okay, so of course that's the history of mankind. The history of mankind is from then on, from Cain and Abel on, is division, wars, rumors of wars. What is that? It's just more and more division, more and more division. You know, everything you could think of, and even between husband and wife, division. Between parents and children, division. That is Satan's whole work in damaging God's image is division. Division is the way to damage God's image. Okay, and then we would lose dominion over Satan. So remember, the dominion for man was to over all the earth, but not just over all the earth. If you read it again, it says over all the earth and over the creeping things that creeps upon the earth, right? I believe that's referring to Satan, right? Referring to all his minions and, and followers, the creeping things, right? So, so God, man was placed on the earth to have image showing image now we recognize is multiple one. If we're multiple one in our generations, then we have dominion over Satan. So God's purpose is that we in oneness defeat, right, Satan and crush his head. Okay, so now Satan came in, of course, is the divide. With division, there's no dominion. He stays the ruler of this world, even though he's been judged on the cross, okay? He was defeated on the cross and made of none effect, but yet he continues by dividing. Now, instead of dividing men, right, he's dividing believers. His whole goal now is focused on dividing believers because as long as believers are divided, the kingdom cannot stand, right? Jesus said, a kingdom divided against itself will not stand. Okay, well, Satan's kingdom is not divided. Okay, they all working together to make sure that we're divided. And as long as we're divided, then the dominion is gone. So when Jesus died on the cross, now, of course, that's the history of the first man, Adam. That's the mankind. No hope. No hope, no, no, no redemption other than Jesus Christ, right? So Jesus Christ came and he died on the cross, not just for the forgiveness of our sins, but he died specifically, John chapter 11, verse 52, that he would bring his scattered children into one and he would bring the, you know, the people of, uh, of division in, uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, in Ephesians chapter 2, he mentioned that he went to the cross in order to break down the middle wall, right? This enmity, this hatred between these two people, right? And, uh, and he was break down and so making peace because these two would become one new man. Okay, now remember that word, one new man. These two have been one new man. So there is this old man, Adam, who got divided. God created him to be many one. That's God's image. That's God's image. But man 
the image was gone. Okay, through sin, the image was gone. Now Jesus, the second, second man, the last Adam, came to have redemption. Yes, praise God. But in additionally, to break down all the walls of partition and separation and hostility between his people so that he can make one new man. Now, remember that word, new man. Okay, now, you go in Ephesians 2, you see that the new man is between the Jews and the Gentiles, right? It's clear. Jews and Gentiles, new man. But when you go to Colossians 3, okay, when you go to Colossians 3, is that the new man who is created in the image of him who created him. And what does this new man look like? This new man where there is neither Jew, Greek, right? Uh, barbarians, Scythians, uh, bond or free, right? All kinds of different people. Now, they are part of this new man. And this new man, going back to Genesis 1, is created in the image of him. That's the point. You know? okay. So now the image of him, he's, he's still back to his image. He needs his image. Okay, the first man, Adam, lost his image. So with the losing of his image, he, there's no dominion. So now with the Jesus Christ coming, to, on the cross and resurrection and coming into the believers, he is now having the new man, the second man, the last Adam, would be this corporate man, this man that has all the different distinctions, yet they are now one because Christ is all and in all. So the point here is that when Jesus says, I will build my ecclesia, which is bringing diverse, distinctive people into one, that's his ecclesia, that the gates of Hades, the gates of hell, will not be able to prevail, right? So that shows the dominion. You see the image of the dominion, right? You have the image of multiple one, and now when, the, when they are one, then the uh, gates of Hades cannot hold back. So we're on the offensive, brother. We're on the offensive, right? We're not playing defense here. We're on the offensive. We're bringing believers together. We're bringing believers to fellowship with each other, regardless of their denominational differences, right? We're going to leave ecumenism to the, you know, to the organizational people. If they want to do ecumenical movement, right, that's their assignment. But our assignment is to is the grassroots assignment is the it's each believers has to be affected one by one affected to love to love other believers that are not like them and then finally of course Romans 16 you have this now fellowship among believers that are different okay Rome was was Rome uh, by then Rome consists of at least five different groups of believers okay and for sure there was a Jewish group there was a Gentile group because it's easy to be separated, segregated, and divided in our natural first man Adam. But now when we get into the second man Adam, the last Adam, then Paul says, you got to go greet. You got to go have fellowship with all our different brothers and sisters. And out of that is the God of peace. The God of peace will crush Satan under our feet shortly. So now again, you see the image and the dominion, right? The image is that they are one. They are distinct, but they're one. We don't, we don't have to conform to each other. We don't have to have the same doctrinal understanding, same practice. I mean, when, once we talk about end times, look, even end times, you have, you have divisions, okay? You can have people talking about end times, and, and all of a sudden, they, they fight over, well... End time is this way. No, end time is this way. When is the tribulation? Uh, or when is the rapture? Well, rapture is, is post-tribulation. No, no, no. It's pre-tribulation, right? I mean, so even end times, the talk of end times can divide, which is fine. Well, praise God, brother, if you are post-tribulation, amen. I'm pre-whatever. It doesn't matter, brother. We'll know one day. Let's fellowship, right? Let's, let's, 
Let's take care of one another. Let's pray together, right? Let's care for the oneness of the body of Christ. And that is what is the image that the Lord is recovering from the, from the, la from the first Adam. He has now recovered that image as the new man, and it's the new man, the kingdom of God, right, that defeats Satan under our feet. So anyway, so this is a, just one more uh, ad, okay, I'm going to add, is that the ecclesia, the building of, of the ecclesia, and by the way, that has been so um, uh, hidden. I mean, the, the concept of ecclesia has been hidden because all we talk about today is church. Well, Jesus will build his church, but that was a conspirator, conspiracy to bring, get people to, to go to church where they can be dictated to. See, that was, that was uh, uh, planned that way. So Tyndale died for not translating the word ecclesia to church because he knew that was completely opposite to what God was after. But now it's, it's in that, in the building of his ecclesia, that we have the keys to the kingdom of heaven. So even the keys, the, the access to the kingdom to bringing in that mountain, you know, we talked about, you know, the stone that becomes a mountain, the stone of Jesus Christ, right? I mean, I think we all agree that stone is Jesus Christ, but that's that growing into the mountain, that's his ecclesia. So it's the ecclesia that would now, what, take over the kingdoms of the world. And so that's the key. So Jesus says, you're a stone, right? And Peter says, we're all living stones. We're all lively stones, and but you need to be built up into a spiritual house, into the into the ecclesia of the Lord, and that will give you access to the kingdom of heaven. Without that oneness, we can talk kingdom, but we don't have access to the kingdom. We could say, let's just agree, you know, because it says whatever we agree on earth, it will be done in heaven, but. That's taken out of context because the two that agree, the two or three that agrees, they came out of the ecclesia. Read Matthew 18, right? So 16 says, if you're stoned for the kingdom, uh, for the ecclesia, you have the authority to bind and to loose. Then in Matthew 18, you know, you have the problem with a brother, two or three can't help him. So the two or three has to go to the ecclesia which is the oneness of the believer, a symphony of the believer. It's that in that symphony of believers that then now they can bind and loose. And then where the two or three, so coming out of that, then this is where two or three, whatever you ask, right, in my, in my name, I will do it. But those, that is the same two or three that now is in harmony, in symphony, with the ecclesia, which is the ecclesia. You know, symphony is a great uh, orchestra, right? And we, are, we all can't be a, a violin. It won't be a symphony, right? We all can't be drums. We all can't be trumpet. No, but in the symphony, right, there are all kinds of instruments, even a little cymbal, right? Little uh, triangle, right? I mean, that gives a little distinct sound there, even though it, it's hardly, you know, part of the orchestra. But that little... Ding, right? I mean, that adds something. And so we need to be that symphony, which is the ecclesia. Then in that symphony, we have the keys of the kingdom to bind and to lose on earth and heaven will follow. Heaven is waiting for earth to lead. Heaven is waiting for earth to lead, but not just because you and me, we, we agree, you know, Francis, you know, we're both business people, okay? And we are both, you know, post-tribulation post rapture. We're both, right, uh, one save, always save, you know, whatever it is, right? Okay, now we agree, so let's, uh, let's bind and loose, right? No, no, I need to be in, in harmony with all kinds of believers. Then in harmony, in symphony with all kinds of believers, that's the ecclesia. Now that gives me the authority, gives us the authority gives us, not me, right, but us the authority to be the kingdom people on earth. So that comes out of oneness. 
Hallelujah. So that's it, brother. <laughs>